Is it possible that NASA killed life on Mars? Aim sure it. We will discuss this question in detail today in the video. Did you know that NASA posted strange sounds from Mars on its website? I would even say they are a bit eerie. But, well, you will hear everything for yourself today. It's amazing how something from 50 years ago has resurfaced in the information oh field. God. So what went wrong with this mission? In 1975, two spacecraft were launched to Mars. Viking 1 was launched in August, and Viking 2 in September of the same year. A year later, these spacecraft were already in orbit around Mars. Each spacecraft consisted of two parts, an artificial satellite and an automatic Martian station. When the landing site was determined, the orbital spacecraft first took photos of these places, and then the landing module separated for descent to the surface. By the way, thanks to NASA's photos, they avoided a mistake, and, seeing too rocky soil, changed the landing site. Viking 2 landed on Mars a month and a half after its counterpart. Perhaps you've heard about the famous face on Mars? Well, it was captured by the Viking 1 spacecraft. In general, this mission was very helpful to scientists. High-quality color photos of the planet's surface were taken for the first time in history. Over 57,000 images were sent to Earth during the mission. Soil analyses were conducted for chemical elements. Many useful details about the weather on Mars were provided, as well as an analysis of the atmosphere. Orbit traces of wind and water erosion were also captured, confirming the hypothesis of pieced rivers and lakes on the planet. After a massive amount of science fiction about the adventures of Martians, one wants to believe it's true. And naturally, one of the tasks of the Viking mission was to find life, even if it's primitive in the form of microorganisms. But here's the problem. Did they choose the right methods? Imagine this situation. An alien the size of the sun and decides to check if there is life on Earth. He takes a multi-story house with people with tweezers and throws it into the ocean. Then he transfers this house to a device and observes whether life activity products are formed. He concludes that no one survived, so there is no life on Earth. Sounds silly? That's how scientists, almost 50 years later, began to realize that they goofed a bit when searching for life on Mars. Professor of Planetary Habitability and Astrobiology, Dirk Schulz Makuch expressed his views on this topic at a symposium. He said that the results of the Viking mission's research were very confusing. For example, experiments with labeled release which tested organic synthesis were initially positive. In other words, these experiments indicated the existence of life. Traces of chlorinated organics were also found, which also indicated life. But scientists at that time decided it was residues from cleaning agents used to sterilize equipment. However, subsequent research from other missions confirmed that it was not a mistake. It has been proven that organic compounds do exist on Mars. But the most important thing, the experiments could have killed life. Mars is more like a desert with an extremely dry climate. But in the experiments, they persistently added water, thinking it would increase the activity of microorganisms. It turned into a foolish situation, similar to the one I mentioned at the beginning with the ocean. Studies in the Atacama Desert, located in northern Chile, showed a similar situation. Microorganisms adapted to a dry environment were found in this desert. They absorbed moisture from the air during fogs. Periodic fogs were also recorded on Mars. In 2017, scientists took samples from three lagoons submerged due to dowries, which had not been in these places for the last 500 years. Research showed that about 80% of bacterial species perished, unable to adapt to the humid environment. In other words, they simply drowned. Naturally, scientists drew an analogy with Mars. They also made the assumption that the experiments conducted by the Viking probes could have killed the studied life. After all, in the experiments, they not only flooded the samples with water, but also heated them to earthly temperatures. Studying Mars with earthly measures? It's strange that scientists of that time couldn't initially figure out that it was a serious mistake. Much more often, we hear about photos and videos from Mars. However, sounds allow us to immerse ourselves more deeply in the atmosphere of a distant world unlike Earth. Considering that the speed of sound on Mars is Yerezo 140 nimis away s, significantly lower than on Earth. On Earth, at a similar temperature, the speed of sound would be 340 mmorad s. Because of this, the volume will be quieter. Additionally, Mars' atmosphere consists of 96% carbon dioxide. This means that high-frequency sounds are absorbed, and only low-frequency sounds can propagate over long distances. NASA's website features a collection of interesting sounds from the Perseverance rover and its flying drone assistant. Of course, there are unremarkable sounds like the noise of the Moogsy air compressor. But there are more interesting sounds as well. 
For the first time in history, the rover recorded the sound of a Martian dust devil. Remember that on Mars, sounds are quieter than on Earth. Also, it will be equally interesting to hear the Martian helicopter Ingenuity, whose sounds were recorded by the rover on its super cam microphone. When Perseverance drove through part of the Jezero crater, it also recorded the sounds of this event. The acoustic recording of laser strikes on a stone target sounds nothing like what we're used to hearing in movies. It captures the sounds of 30 strikes, some slightly louder and some quieter. Variations in the intensity of cracking sounds provide information about the physical structure of the target, such as its relative hardness or the presence of weather-resistant coatings. The target was approximately 10 feet away. And how does the wind sound on Mars? To eliminate any guesswork? NASA released such a recording on February 22nd, 2021, after deploying the rover's mast. Of course, it's challenging to determine the strength of the wind by ear. Our brains are accustomed to analyzing this in earthly conditions. On Mars, even a hurricane would sound less threatening than on Earth. Such a sound was heard on board a spacecraft during the apparatus's interplanetary journey. NASA was testing cameras and microphones during the journey to Mars. You can listen and imagine yourself flying in this spacecraft. But NASA employees went even further and decided to demonstrate how familiar sounds would sound if there were life on Mars. By the way, scientists believe that life on Mars could be revived by changing the composition of the atmosphere. There are even projects on how to do this. So let's imagine that we are in the future when humans have revived Mars and can listen to how it sounds. For comparison, on the website, you can listen to the Earth version and the Martian version. Take the sound of birds as a basis against the background of city noise on Earth. And here's how the same thing would sound on Mars. Honestly, it's a bit eerie. Here, you can hardly hear the birds because on Mars, high sounds don't travel well today. But if the atmosphere is changed in the future, the sounds will become more similar to those on Earth. What do you think? Share your opinion in the comments. Now, the sounds of the ocean on Earth. But how would it sound on Mars, something eerie again? What do you think? This is how a regular performance in a hall sounds on Earth. Explorers, and we will meet many setbacks on but the imagine how a Martian performance in Congress or in court would sound. We are species of explorers, and we will in my opinion, these sounds allow us to expand our understanding of Mars. Mars is one of the most mysterious and attractive planets in the solar system. Today, we know it as a red desert with a thin atmosphere, a cold climate, and small icy moons. But was it always like this? What was Mars like billions of years ago when it hadn't yet lost its magnetic field and water? And could life have existed on it? More and more research indicates that initially Mars was not at all like how we see it now. Two billion years ago, this planet had water and a completely different atmosphere, similar to Earth's. The average annual temperature was around 118 degrees Celsius. That is, quite suitable for life. The most interesting and controversial question that arises when studying ancient Mars is whether life could have existed on it. Scientists have not yet found a definitive answer to this question, but there is a lot of indirect evidence confirming this possibility. For example, organic molecules such as methane, formaldehyde, and benzene, which are the building blocks of life, have been discovered on Mars. Clay minerals have also been found, which can serve as catalysts for the chemical reactions necessary for the formation of living cells. Moreover, there are traces of ancient hydrothermal vents on this planet, which could provide heat and energy for life. And finally, there are places on Mars where conditions similar to those in which life originated on Earth could have existed, such as salty lakes, icy fields, and underground aquifers. Meteorite finds from Mars also indicate that it is quite likely that life existed on Mars. So could people have arrived on Earth from Mars? It's not necessary for Martians to have evolved to such a level, to have the ability to build a spacecraft and travel to Earth. It is sufficient for a meteorite from Mars containing fragments of DNA or living organisms to have landed on Earth. This process is called panspermia. 
Since the 1960s, scientists have begun to discover structures resembling imprints of single-celled organisms in some meteorites. They have also found complex organic molecules in their composition. Thus, in 2001, probably as a result of a meteorite explosion in the atmosphere, unusual precipitations known as red rain were observed in the south of the Indian state of Kerala. In November of the same year, officials from the Indian Government Department of Science and Technology, CCS, and TBGRI reported that the red rain in Kerala was caused by spores of widely distributed epiphytic green algae belonging to the genus Trentapolia, which are often symbionts of lichens. In 2006, during the Deep Impact mission, data were obtained indicating the presence of water and simple organic compounds in comet material. Proponents of the panspermia theory believe that these data point to comets as one of the possible carriers of life in the universe. If there was indeed life on Mars, what happened to it? Why did Mars transform from a green and moist planet into a red and dry desert? Scientists believe that the disappearance of Mars Magnetic, field about 4 billion years ago, was the cause of this. Without a magnetic field, Mars became vulnerable to solar wind, which gradually blew away the atmosphere and water from the planet. This led to a decrease in pressure and temperature on the surface, as well as to the loss of the global hydrological cycle. As a result, Mars began to dry out, cool down and oxidize, changing its color and chemical composition. Life, if it existed there, either became extinct or took refuge in the planet's depths where favorable conditions could have been preserved. Mars is a planet that never ceases to amaze and attract humanity. Since ancient times, people have observed it in the sky, tried to understand its nature and its connection to Earth. Modern science has revealed many new facts about Mars, but has also left many mysteries and questions. This planet arouses interest and imagination, as well as stimulates research and art. Mars is a planet that could become a new home for humanity in the future if we can overcome the difficulties and risks associated with its colonization. After all, it is known that in the distant future, the sun will begin to expand and destroy Earth. At that time, when Mars will, on the contrary, be warm and safe, the red planet can reveal to us the secrets of the origin of life in the universe if we can find its traces on its surface or beneath it. Mars is a planet waiting for us. And are we ready for it? In my view, dreamers and romantics drive progress. Once upon a time, adventurers were sailors exploring the seas. Today, our ocean for discoveries is the boundless cosmos. That's all from us. See you all.